So I'm Patrick. I work at uh, Gameloft Montreal as a multiplayer uh, game designer, and I have been working on a first-person player, first-person shooter franchise called Modern Combat in the past two years. Um, <clears throat> I really enjoy working at Gameloft, really, because uh, I feel that the the whole history of video games really unfolded uh, in fast forward at that company in the last years. Uh, Gameloft went from creating 8-bit and 16-bit games on Motorola and Sony Ericsson uh, cell phones uh, to uh, creating Nintendo 64-like games when the, the, the first iPhone came out. And uh, now, uh, really, I feel that we're making games uh, that are almost on par with the production quality of the games uh, from the, the next-gen console, so that's great. Uh, mo mobile gaming really evolved quickly with giant leaps in the, in the last uh, years, uh, especially if we compare it to the, uh, the traditional video game industry. An important uh, part of my, uh, my development as a, a game designer, I don't know if you re remember this movie, it's called uh, The Wizard. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, when I started playing video games in the middle of the, uh, the 80s, video game competitions were uh, wild fiction, really, and it was a very amazing thought. But really, I only played competitively against my little brother, and uh, it always ended in a fight, really, and that was, that was it. <clears throat> it took time before the video game industry grew, and uh, that uh, with the gradual spread of the internet, that we could uh, take the next step. And it only really struck me when I attended my first Counter-Strike uh, LAN party and StarCraft LAN party, and I realized that it was very much possible. And now, uh, with the, the widespread of internet in the next-gen consoles, uh, it took another step uh, again, and it became widespread. Uh, and with organizations like the MLG, we see all sorts of esports emerge year after year. I don't think that our newest AAA title at Gameloft is quite there yet, but we can certainly say that we've achieved a new benchmark for competitive game on the iOS. So this all started with Modern Combat Sandstorm a few years ago. We released multiplayer uh, features as part of a DLC update. Uh, and basically in 2010, Modern Combat 2 uh, multiplayer basically took that. And with the help of uh, our lead game designer, Alex Charbonneau, who created great, great multiplayer maps for uh, this game, we, uh, we had huge success to a point, it was very surprising, to a point where uh, our servers could not even handle the connections anymore. Uh, players created the forums, they created clans, they organized tournaments. We were really overwhelmed. And um, so when we started working on Modern Combat 3, Fallen Nation, uh, well, we asked ourselves, you know, why shouldn't we try to, you know, screw this casual market and we'll try to do a hardcore game, a real cool competitive game on the iOS. So that's what we did for the multiplayer part at least. And uh, we had a great critical reception, got uh, 88 on, uh, on Metacritic. Uh, all the, the critic sites called our multiplayer a great, uh, great asset, a great plus. And uh, we, I think we satisfied our fan base. We, uh, we got, again, players that created uh, wikis, that created uh, fan sites, strategy guides, again, forum uh, clans and tournaments. And uh, so uh, we were quite, again, satisfied. Um, we added uh, many features you will see along the pr presentation that I think uh, brings our game perhaps not yet on par with the existing uh, competitive games out there, especially on the console and on the PC. But it's an important step, I think, for the mobile, game, uh, mobile gaming industry. So today, I want to share with you that multiplayer design experience. Uh, you will see that designing multiplayer modes for uh, handheld devices uh, that implies new and interesting and uh, quite surprising challenges. Uh, let me guide you to, to, through the steps that we took during uh, the development of the game. Step one, we can never say it enough, but you gotta learn to understand your players, that's for sure. I, for one, don't think it's possible to make games that appeal to everyone, so you gotta make choices. The first question we asked ourselves when we started the project was, who, ex who exactly plays Modern Combat 2, and especially, why are they choosing this game over Modern Warfare or Call of Duty, which obviously, with the, with the firepower of these next-gen consoles, are 
like uh, have a better visual quality and obviously uh, perhaps more content. So we scoured the forums for countless hours and we found out that most of our players actually also played Call of Duty in Modern Warfare. In fact, <clears throat> most were teenagers. They, uh, they were looking for a fix of a first-person first shooter while at school or elsewhere. Uh, some, uh, some played after their, their you know, console gaming quota was reached and their parents uh, asked them to do something else or go out or whatever. So, yeah, it's a natural thing. So, uh, but really, the reason why they, they played the game is because they're addicted to the awesome feeling that you get when you overcome an opponent in a competitive game, really. They're looking for the type of fun that Nicole Lazaro calls Fiero. They're killers and they're achievers. That's what they want to do, and they want to do it all the time. So <clears throat> we knew that uh, when a player seeks this kind of fun, the slightest game unbalance ruins it all. It creates a huge frustration. So keeping this in mind, we knew that the game needed to provide rich customization and plenty of strategies to try out. Of these strategies, none must stand out as a dominant one. That's, that's obvious. Players want to quickly change their build, feel the difference between them. They want to, to decide whether to keep it or change it right away. Uh, they want to try to find, uh, try to find new, new, new tricks to throw at their opponents, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. Basically, competitive players are constantly looking to be the best, so they will be looking for the tiny little design flaw and loophole in your, uh, in your game, and they will exploit it. That's why balancing is such an important uh, phase in uh, competitive games. So we knew all of this because we're, we, the design team uh, back in Montreal, we're all at least partly com competitive gamers, uh, really. Uh, our lead, Alex Charbonneau, is a hardcore Heroes of New Earth player. Uh, our level design team is mostly comprised of uh, huge uh, Team Fortress 2 enthusiasts and uh, Dota enthusiasts. <coughs> I, myself, am a StarCraft 2 uh, player. So, <coughs> so yeah, so we kind of knew where we were going there. Uh, and the reason uh, why Valve or Blizzard are so, so, uh, are so successful with esports is basically because they can nail all of this so well. The greatest challenge we faced uh, was delivering everything there and everything we, we had in mind uh, for a crucial competitive, uh, like a, a true competitive game, uh, was to make all of that fit on an iPhone, despite the technology being harder to manipulate, etc., and with a time frame of only one year for production. So, uh, <clears throat> yes, I'm um, sorry, just uh, going to put an emphasis on, on that, on the, uh, uh, the iPhone. Uh, you got to know that at Gameloft, uh, also, uh, the company really wants to uh, create games that are backward compatible. And it's important to, to reach the most, as, as many peop, uh, players as possible. And uh, so uh, we make the game, all our games, basically compatible for the 3GS, the, the iPhone 3, and uh, in, the, in the previous games that we made, even the iPhone 2 and the iPhone 1. So it, it, at some points, uh, at some points it gets very difficult. It feels like fitting a, a PS3 games into a PS1, it, and it's kind of kind of hard. So you gotta find works or workarounds, basically. <clears throat> so uh, insane RAM limits lowered the number of different objects that we could load simultaneously in a level. Uh, and that obviously limited the number of different feedbacks that we could have for perks or, or weapons or uh, items. So we designed more perks that had a passive invisible effect, such as increased XP gain, X increased damage, increased running speed, things that we didn't have to show uh, ex explicitly. <clears throat> also, the limited polygon budget called for much smaller divisions of the map. Uh, and this had a huge incidence on level design. Uh, we had to work hard to limit the, uh, the lines of sight. So as you can see, we, we, uh, tr throughout the project, we use a kind of a portal system. So uh, players in a, a portal, uh, in a room, pardon me, can only see players that are in an adjacent room through one of these portals. And um, it was uh, also uh, very hard to keep the balance between, preserve the balance between every different build out there because in a first person shooter, uh, in a military shooter, like, uh, like the Modern Warfare series, obviously you're going to have uh, close quarter combat uh, players, you're going to have mid-range combat, uh, you're going to have uh, snipers, uh, commando style guys. Uh, so they're all in there and they all want their 30 seconds of fame, obviously. All right, about the controls. 
So uh, we have something at GameLoft that we humorously call uh, the GameLoft DNA. What's that? It's basically a control scheme that we use or a template for a control scheme that we use on all of our games. Uh, obviously projects, different projects tweak it for their needs, and we did. Uh, but uh, we also added the possibility of customizing that interface to better suit the player's style. So uh, we added the possibility of moving around buttons, of resizing buttons, obviously, uh, augmenting, lowering sensitivity, and this, this is crucial. But even with all this, uh, that, this effort, uh, the iPad as a controller is still not as responsive as a the, as the standard controller, for sure. And uh, for a new player, it's going to take a few hours be before they, they feel somewhat uh, comfortable. Uh, they're going to feel quite handicapped there for a while. So, uh, <clears throat> so since essentially the, 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 the problem is that it's harder to look around, basically. It's harder to move. It's harder to look. It's harder to do all these, these little operations that you can do basically just with a move of a finger. Now you actually have to move your finger uh, and the, or your whole hand on the device that that, may, that uh, takes the, the little millisecond uh, extra that will make you die in multiplayer or whatever. So it's kind of frustrating. So uh, we kind of have to, uh, we did have to make some design de decisions uh, and these are pretty much uh, it. But the design decision basically was uh, that we had to uh, make sure that, uh, well, we avoid at all costs having uh, uh, dead angles, to uh, avoid having uh, places where players could hide too, uh, too easily without being seen somewhat uh, easily by the other players. And we also added uh, mechanics to allow players to uh, scan the maps and spy on other players uh, with uh, satellite scans, with uh, perks like radars, like sensors, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> Now here's some, now here's something that's easy to uh, to miss, and uh, I think it still is a major issue in most of the multiplayer games uh, out there on the on the App Store. Uh, basically, <clears throat> when enemies on an iPad are four times as big as on an iPhone, which is obvious because the, the device itself is is bigger, it's just as good as having an, a name bot. It's a huge advantage. So uh, yeah, we, uh, we could, probably could have addressed this issue with a device detection script or whatever and according uh, accuracy penalties to the players. But then again, this might be thrown away by some firmware update or a new version, a uh, new iPhone or new whatever. So uh, it, was, uh, it was not a good option for us. Uh, and then again, we thought, uh, hey, some, some PC games have this issue also. When I remember when I started playing uh, Counter-Strike, I played on a 640 by 480 screen, and when I bought a new computer, it made the, like all the difference in the world. I could really feel that I was I was better at the game, so we decided to to uh, just deal with it and uh, have it uh, this way. But we did lower, whenever possible, the dis the uh, distance of the engagements on the map. So trying to uh, make sure that uh, to limit uh, the 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 number of spots on the map where uh, someone could uh, shoot. Uh, someone else from afar. So uh, with all this work, our game would only sell still for seven dollars. And uh, while I'm not entirely uh, happy about it, it's uh, one of the realities in our industry. Uh, we were asked to uh, to uh, put additional ways of spending money in the game. <clears throat> So implementing uh, in-app purchases. I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan, but I really do understand its necessity. And in this case, it was necessary. And uh, because we still wanted the, the game to be accessible with an accessible price. Uh, and so we implemented it. Uh, we, we didn't think vanity items would sell well uh, in a military shooter, especially with the limited RAM, because basically we, 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 we need to avoid uh, right, the, the, the items that have a visual effect on the character, and that kind of defeats the purpose of having a vanity item. So, so we went in another direction. We, we went in a, a separation of our level, leveling system and our uh, purchase system. So basically, in Modern Combat 3, we have two, uh, two parallel systems, pretty much like in a, a Black Ops, Call of Duty Black Ops. Uh, we opted for a leveling system. Uh, that's totally independent from the credits. So before being able to buy a weapon or any item, 
players first need to unlock it by reaching the appropriate level. And uh, so this prevented uh, the players from just jump starting to the best possible uh, combinations in the game, uh, but still offered to reduce the grinding time. And uh, we found out that for some players, this was a very uh, positive, uh, positive aspect of the game. So again, we did this while keeping the balance in mind as much as, uh, as, much as possible. So by making a competitive game, we committed to delivering the very best of ourselves. And even with a tight deadline uh, and with our weak handheld devices, we wanted our game to be a AAA. That's, that's very important. Because you don't get a good player community from making botched games, really. So, <clears throat> as you all know, success often, or may, or may not, as you may know or may not know, success often resides in the smallest details in your game. You will probably, if you're in the game industry, you already know. If you're not, then it's a matter of time. Uh, environmental details, color coding, feedback when you press a button, uh, something as trivial as text alignment in a menu, these are all very, very important. This is true for all games, but even more so for competitive games and even more, more so on, on handheld devices. Um, especially on, in, uh, for competitive games because uh, players don't want to spend an extra minute in your menu. They want to spend that extra minute in the game making kills and making levels and uh, getting better at the game. So, uh, so yeah, uh, everything that should be done in a console game was done in hours. <clears throat> so all in all, we delivered a solid game if we believe the, the critics. But if we had to do it all over again, uh, we would certainly try to do certain aspects better, if not all of them. Uh, while our intentions were clear from the start, sometimes applying them doesn't come naturally when you're in production, especially when you're in crunch time and you haven't slept in X days and whatever. So uh, yeah, we wanted everything to be like a triple A title and uh, we didn't expect we would, uh, we would catch their diseases as well because we were particularly badly hurt by this phenomenon. Not because they stole our game, really not, we don't care, steal it, whatever, but because they found ways of hacking cheats into the, into the game. And that's what really hurt us, especially us being, uh, being powered by a monetization system. So we tried banning the most obvious cheaters. Uh, we, uh, we created the quick fix, hot fixes for the game. Uh, but really, some will get away with it, and it's very unfortunate because uh, this is truly one of the wor worst problems that can plague a competitive game. Uh, just uh, getting back to one of the, my, fir my first slides there, uh, breaking the balance basically breaks the fun, removes the, removes the fiero, etc. So uh, there are things we could have done, we should have done design-wise to correct this, but it, it's, uh, it, it's hard to evade it uh, completely. And uh, this, this issue we didn't see coming at all, us being you know, one of the first uh, attempts at making a real competitive game on the iOS. We never thought that people would actually try to, to hack one of our games. What the hell, it's an it's a iPhone game. But it's like, yes, we created a, a competitive game. We, we created some angry players, and we created this monster. So there are no punk busters, Steams, or Battle.net uh, yet so far on the, uh, on the, I, on the App Store. Uh, so developers basically need to take that into their own, own hands. And that's what we'll do in the future, for sure. <clears throat> I'm grateful that despite all of this cheating is issue, players stayed loyal and active. And in fact, reps at Gameloft are discussing right now, or I have discussed actually, with the MLG to host a modern combat uh, page on their website with statistics and leaderboard. So I'm kind of getting close to that unimaginable goal that I had in the, in the start. So I'm pretty proud of that. And it's pretty much the best uh, reward I could get for working on, on that project. I don't have the, the skills to be a pro gamer myself, far from it, but I am eager to take part in the, the, in the pro gaming scene as a designer, and I'm even more excited to do so with uh, the new and promising platform that, it, that is the, uh, the iOS. Our experience with competitive, game will, competitive games will uh, keep on growing, uh, and I'm confident that uh, one day we'll see one of our games in the pro circuit of uh, MLG, for sure. So <clears throat> that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, 
I'm glad that we'll be glad to answer all of your questions regarding either Gameloft, uh, Modern Combat 3, or handheld uh, gaming, which I think is one of the most fascinating and interesting uh, avenues for the game industry. Because uh, as you all know, with uh, many services like uh, eventually um, cloud gaming and stuff like that, we'll, uh, I think we, we will see more and more of uh, interesting and intriguing new uh, portable console games out there. And it's definitely one of the most intriguing uh, paths for our, our industry. So thank you very much. Any questions? I'm currently uh, doing some balancing work for MMORTS with a level system yep. and uh, that has a competitive scene in it. How are you able to balance uh, the leveling system with your uh, money, that, uh, the way where you purchase items? Okay, good question. Uh, we're, uh, we're using kind of a sum zero uh, balancing in our game. So basically, uh, new weapons are not necessarily stronger. Uh, and it's pr probably not uh, the case in your game because an MMO usually pr uh, implies some sort of, uh, of uh, increase in power. Uh, it's inherent, inherent to the style. But uh, in uh, our game, uh, all the weapons basically have this, if they have an advantage, they have a, an equivalent disadvantage. And um, uh, the, the weapons at the end of the unlock tree uh, are usually more uh, surprising or more, uh, more out of the box, out of the blue, but uh, they're, not, uh, they're not stronger necessarily. So that's how we dealt with it. Having more money basically makes you uh, avoid grinding to have more options uh, in, your, uh, in your armory. Thank you. Oh, yep. So I have three actually. I figured I'd fire them off. Rapid fire at you. Um, <laughs> first of all, you, you chose to focus on a genre style that is essentially Twitch gaming. Mm -hmm. um, and you chose to do that on a touchscreen device, which to me is the antithesis of responsiveness as far as like controllers go. Yes. Um, so uh, I'm just curious uh, uh, how you guys went about trying to overcome that. I mean, you talked a little bit about it. And mm -hmm. I guess also more specifically, what were your reasons for choosing to go that route, uh, understandably in the competitive space, but doing a first-person shooter as opposed to like a tank game or something which is, you know, lends itself better to a touchscreen, more mm -hmm. slow reaction device? All right. Um, yes. Well, Gameloft uh, releases uh, like uh, at least I don't know how many, perhaps uh, like 50 games a year, and I'm pretty sure that uh, they have uh, tank games too. Yeah. Uh, I know. I don't know my, like the whole lineup of uh, my own company. That's uh, that's a bit sad, but at the same time, I, I just have, I, I don't have the time to get, you know, to get uh, to, to see all of them. But um, <clears throat> no, uh, really, we, we approach our project just like any hardcore ca uh, console project, uh, meaning that uh, we, uh, uh, we have uh, insights from, from the marketing, from the executives, uh, telling us that, uh, you know, uh, the next game should probably be uh, a first-person shooter. There are no, not many, so not so many first-person shooters out there so far, especially, in, especially in the military, uh, um, like theme. Uh, you should go ahead and make uh, make a military shooter, and that's that's what we did basically. But um, looking back on it, I, I think it's a very good decision uh, because um, really, when I, when we look at our uh, all our competitors as uh, first-person shooters. I think that none really went in the... Uh, no production team was dumb enough to go after modern warfare. And we did, we did that, and we, we, we were constantly... Uh, like, you can read all the critics. Basically, we're constantly being compared to modern warfare 2 or 3 or whatever. And uh, saying, oh, well, you know, this game is pretty good, but it's not as good as Modern Warfare. Well, Jesus, it sells for $7. And, you know, so, so we're pretty satisfied with that yeah. overall. Yeah. Uh, also, you mentioned piracy as a major issue, yep. uh, but didn't really throw out any solutions that you may have coming in the future. So do you, do you as a company have any thoughts that you could share with us on how yes. you cope? Uh, you, uh, none that I could easily share with right. you, but yeah. obviously because of security uh, right. reasons. But... Uh, uh, yes, and the design-wise, uh, it would have been. Let me explain to you exactly what failed, totally failed in our uh, in our um, game uh, regarding the the, the 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 cheaters. Having cheaters is one thing. Okay, if you unlock uh, unlimited cash and buy all the weapons in the game, it's, well, 
good for you. But like I said, we have uh, some zero balancing, so basically it doesn't theoretically make you better at the game. <clears throat> Problem is, we, <laughs> we implemented uh, kind of a kill streak uh, feature similar to that of uh, Modern Warfare. Uh, it's a, we call it military support, but we call it military support because it's also possible with in-game money, money that you, you, you earned while playing the game or with uh, real life money if you're really into that game, uh, to call uh, help on the battlefield. So you can call uh, an airstrike, you can call an helicopter, you can call a new weaponry and stuff. And uh, <clears throat> obviously, uh, this is a huge flaw in the design because if if you if you hack into the the, the, the money, if you can get as mu as, much, as much money as you want, you can get as many <laughs> military support uh, support uh, like uh, objects as you want. So yeah. this kind of ruined the whole thing for us. But uh, it, we addressed it in the uh, in the the hotfix. Uh, we're totally aware of that, but it's that's a an example of how we should really try to make our design bulletproof regarding uh, piracy. And then, then there's the whole technical aspects of it, uh, but this is another department really, it's the programmers who uh, deal with that. Yeah, and lastly, really quick, uh, you mentioned cloud, uh, and obviously that's coming up and will yep. likely be a possibility in the near future for you guys. Uh, and you detailed lots of you know restraints that you have being on the iOS, which basically will just be completely gone when you're on cloud, you don't have to worry about all these resource constraints. So mm -hmm. what sort of opportunities are you guys planning on taking if, if you get the chance to in the near future? Okay. Uh, I, first of all, I, uh, I, I'm not entirely sure in, short, in the short term that we can see that happen, uh, probably in the long run, yes. But uh, for now, I feel that uh, the internet connections are still too, uh, are, they're too varying from one place to another, and basically it makes all this, especially in, in competitive gaming, it makes it very hard to, to work. Uh, there's also the, the issue of paying for bandwidth. Uh, so for now, I think it's, it's not an issue, and eventually when it will come, uh, and it, we know it's, it, it's, it works very well, uh, unfortunately for Gameloft, uh, the major studios out there will be way much uh, more uh, like uh, comfortable with taking that market because they already already make some huge high budget games, while we do not. So then, then uh, it's not my call, but I'm guessing we might reorient towards uh, a different uh, niche. You stated towards the end of your presentation that yeah. with with your game, you might have wanted to take. Uh, a different route and do things differently. What exactly uh, are some examples of that? Uh, regarding what uh, re Regarding the, the development process of, of making uh, the game itself. Like what, what were some of the things that you maybe wanted to do different maybe oh, in the next right. game? Right. Uh, okay, a, a few things uh, really. Uh, first, we, we, uh, we felt that uh, although we, uh, I'm pretty sure all the guys uh, back in Montreal will agree, we think we made an awesome, awesome game, but it really is, uh, we, we made a military shooter. I think it has some, some very unique aspects to it in, in the single player, but in multiplayer, it's really, it's really an attempt at, at, uh, at doing the, the closest thing to what, what's existing in the industry, like, like Medal of Honor, like Modern Warfare, like Battlefield, and it's really, uh, it really lacks this little something that, that can you know, make us uh, stand out from the crowd, so that's one thing. Uh, and regarding all the production uh, so far, obviously there's the, the aspect of, of level design. Uh, you can always get better at, at uh, designing levels and uh, we, we learned a lot from our lessons in the Modern Combat uh, 3, uh, especially with the enga engagement uh, distances. Uh, we'll try to find new ways of uh, controlling these. Uh, with uh, game objects uh, or uh, game uh, game objectives like uh, like uh, like uh, flags or bombs and uh, defuse the bomb, uh, just the way you place these items on the map uh, will 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 make the um, the the gameplay and the, all the feeling of the the, the battle itself uh, very different. So uh, we're gonna play around uh, with that a lot more in our next uh, titles. We also uh, want to explore perhaps uh, more depth in the. Um, and uh, customization and offer more options for the players. Good, well, thank you very much. <laughs>